Okay, let's say we have two neighboring countries that are at war and we've been hired to create an animation of the front line of this war moving. In this particular war, we have a front line that is moving in between two countries, constantly crossing the border. You have an invasion that's pushed back into the initial country. So this sounds like it can be a pretty complex and tricky visual, but it's actually quite simple. Now, as always, I'm using Adobe After Effects with a premium extension called GeoLayers 3. If you wanna learn more about that, Follow the links in the video description. Now, in this specific example, I'm gonna be focusing on Korea, North and South Korea. We're gonna have a border moving in between these two countries. I've already set up my GeoLayers 3 map comp here, focusing on the Korean Peninsula. So I'm gonna go into the search bar and I'm gonna search for both North and South Korea and download them as map features. So just find the sovereign country from Natural Earth and click Add to Browser. Now this is a very simple rig that I'm gonna to put together here that is gonna consist of, I think, three layers, basically. We're gonna have two polygons of the entire Korean Peninsula. They're kind of the same, just different colors. And then we're gonna have a third solid layer that's gonna serve as a mat. And we're gonna connect both the polygons to that mat and then animate masks to move that front line. So to do this, I need to create a new polygon for the Korean Peninsula. And to do that, I just grab both North and South Korea and I merge these features right here via this button. That's going to create an entirely new polygon with no inner border here. So we only have the outer borders. I'm gonna click on Feature Properties and I'm gonna rename this Korean Peninsula. Okay, so let's say in this example, we're gonna use a red color for North Korea. We're gonna use a blue color for South Korea. So come up here to the layer styles. I went ahead and created new styles here. I'm gonna grab North Korea. And if you go to edit styles, you can see I just added a, a super solid saturated red here. And actually let's grab South Korea first. We'll grab South Korea. And then with the Korean Peninsula map feature selected, I'm gonna go ahead and draw this out. And I'll go ahead and rename this particular layer. So this is blue. So we're gonna call this South Korea Occupied. Now I'll go back, switch it to the North Korea red, draw this out again. Now I have my red, I will rename this one. You guessed it, North Korea occupied. Okay, so now I have my two polygons. I have the red Korean peninsula and I have the blue Korean peninsula. Now I'm gonna add a new solid layer and it's important that this solid layer covers the entire map. So my map comp view now is perfectly fine. I'm just gonna go to layer new solid and we're gonna call this Animate Me Matte. And color doesn't really matter because this is just gonna be used as an alpha matte. So it just needs to be 100% opacity when I apply the matte. But right now I'll hit the T key and I'm actually gonna turn this down just so we can see the Korean Peninsula. What I'm gonna do now is apply a mask to it. So we want to apply a mask that kind of goes around here and then cuts through the middle and then we'll apply each polygon to it and have one of those inverted. So we'll have a alpha track mat for say North Korea and then for the South Korea polygon we'll have an alpha track mat inverted. So I will just quickly grab the pin tool. Now with this selected, I can just really quickly draw this like that. Now, if you want super detailed borders, I could um, essentially go back and draw out North Korea, like we could draw out North Korea and just use this as like a reference layer. So I could draw this out. And then I could, you know, come in here and really get this close. So actually, let's just do that. I'll grab my mask again and uh, delete this. And now with this selected, I will just really quickly, um, you know, do a down and dirty little trace of this border. Okay, now I need to turn the opacity back up. And if I look at the mask here, you can see it's set to add. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna delete the North Korea polygon because I was just using that as a guide layer to hand draw out my little border there. Now I'm gonna use this as a mat. So I'm gonna toggle the switches and modes here so I can see the track mat layer. And now I'm gonna use these pick whips to attach these. So first I want North Korea. I want North Korea to use this as a mat. So if I grab this and attach it to Animate Me Mat, it now uses it as an alpha mat. And if you hover your cursor over here, you can see alpha mat selected. So now, look what happens. If I go grab this, you can see that now 
I can grab these if you hold the shift key. Just be careful here when you grab these around. Now you can see you can move these around. So I'm super excited to announce that I'm working on an all new GeoLayers 3 Premium course that is very focused on a specific theme of mapping, which is very, very interesting and cool, and I'm just so excited about it. So if you'd like to learn more, sign up for my mailing list, which is linked down in the video description. I'm going to be giving out updates and information about the release date for the pre-sale, as well as how you can access discounts for that pre-sale and all that cool stuff. So go check it out. Thank you so much. So let's say I wanna create a quick little animation of this border moving. A real down and dirty way to do this is to just animate this mass path. So I add a keyframe here to the mass path. Let's just go out for a few seconds here. And now I can grab you know, a group of these by selecting them like this. And now I'll just simply drag it all the way down here. And I'm not gonna spend any time on this at all, but if you wanna go, you know, you can get as much detail as you want by adding more vertices or you know manually putting these wherever you want you can go crazy with this so let's say it goes all the way down here to the south and then we're going to grab these again here we'll grab one and then select this whole group and then move them back up to the north here and you can kind of position these wherever you want go crazy with it and then i'll copy this first keyframe and paste it back here and then actually grab all of these and add some easy ease. And we should have a little bit of a like little looping keyframe here of our front line going down south, then up north, then back to the center, and it'll just kind of loop. Okay, so this is rough. It looks absolutely horrible. So how are we gonna spice this up? Well, we wanna add some, this edge is just looking way too clean and crisp. And that's really the beauty of this particular technique. And the reason I use a solid layer is because when you apply specific effects to a solid, it behaves differently compared to when you apply specific effects to vector layers. So your shape layers are vector layers, your solids are rasters. So as we apply these effects to the raster layers, they're gonna stick to the rasters, especially when we do zoom moves. So if I do something like a turbulent displace, for example, on a shape layer, and then I zoom the map, that turbulent displace is just gonna move and undulate and wiggle around as we zoom. Whereas if we have it on a solid, um, it's not going to do that. So that's the whole reason I like to use this. And then the turbulent displace will also interact with the mask path as I animate it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I can come over here and just search for a turbulent displace and add it here and you're going to see right away it starts to wiggle out our edges a little bit i'm going to turn up the complexity to something like nine and we start to get kind of a really interesting look and you can play with this to your heart's content turn down the size or turn up the size and do whatever you want here actually it looked better before and since this is a mask as well you can hit f for the mask feather and you can just like start to feather it out as well. You can really get like whatever kind of look uh, you're going for. Maybe we can feather this out by 25. And um, what's really cool about this is you'll notice that as this animates now, we get this really dynamic look, which is very cool. So you can, you can really customize. This is the turbulent displace and rough and edges and these effects. It's really where you can do all the customization. Um, so you can manually animate these vertices to get all the details of the specific borders and then you customize the look of the edge via effects and playing with this mat and the cool thing now is like as i said as you zoom in and out um, this turbulent displace is is not going to act up on you as it would with a shape layer also the reason we don't apply a turbulent displace directly to our shape here is because it would displace the edges of our border so that's the whole reason we use a solid because it has the buffer and won't um, add turbulence to the edges of our polygon okay so this still looks horrible mainly because these colors are absolutely atrocious so i'm going to really quickly like take the color out of my base map with a tint so we'll add a tint here and now i'm going to grab these two polygons and let's do a Let's do some kind of blend mode. Let's do like a color blend. Okay, now it's looking a little bit better, but you'll notice that this red is much like stronger than this. And that's due to the fact that this blue is essentially still underneath this red. So this red is actually blending with the blue. 
So if I were to do something like an overlay or something, you'd be able to tell it a little bit better, I think. So you can see here, um, that's looking way different. So we don't want that. We really wanna be able to see that red color. So all we have to do is apply the same track mat to our South Korea and then just invert it. So to do that, you just apply the same thing, apply this, but to invert it, you just have this little button right here. Click to invert the mat, boom. Now we have our red and our blue and they're, this is very important when you wanna blend things, you don't wanna stack these layers up and have them messing with each other. So as I said, this is, um, this is a three layer setup, which is pretty dang dope if you ask me. Now, if you wanna have a more complex rig, like for example, if you wanna have an intro where you have the borders and then it kind of invades, you're gonna need to add a few additional layers and like transition them. But this is a really cool way to very quickly have an invasion between um, between multiple countries. I'm actually working with one of my tier three patrons. I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, but we're putting together some um, Korean war maps and we're actually using this technique to um, do our invasion visuals. So this is like kind of like real world, using this in a, in a real world project. And you know what? I actually forgot one of the most important steps, which is to actually connect your mat layer to the map so that if you move your map around, your mat will follow along. So to do that, simply a parent pick whip it to the map comp anchor and then set it to 3D and now you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. If you really wanna dive deep on map animations, go check out my Patreon page. There's a link to that in the video description. And if you wanna become a master of GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. Again, link in the video description. See you in the next one. Thank you.